Yo, what's going on everybody? Quan Incredible here to bring you the review for Black Clover episode 138. Now, I didn't do an episode review last week just because for the episode reviews, I kind of want to like center them around like more of the, like, I don't want to say serious, but like more of the serious episodes. Like last week's episode was charming and was like really comedic. So I didn't really feel like there was a lot to talk about. If you guys really want me to do those ones too, I will. But for the most part, I'll try to stick to the more serious ones. But with this one, we get um, a look into our favorite super magic knight, Zora. Now, before I get like deep into the episode review, uh, I just want to talk about how Zora is so similar to Yami. Uh, just like from this episode like because we see him he has his like his like black cloak and he's just wandering around and like if you guys remember that's the same thing Yami used to do uh, when he was a member of the I want to say they were called the Grey Deer at that point in time they weren't the Azir Deer they, they, they were the Grey Deer back when Julius was, was the captain Yami would just literally wander around <laughs> like either handling missions or just going off on his own so like, I think it's a really cool parallel that um a lot of people in the uh like just like a lot of fans would argue that asta is really similar to yami but i feel like you could also make the very sound argument that zora might be just as similar to yami as asta is obviously in much different ways but the argument is there so the episode starts with like a flashback at the, at the very beginning of all of this like time skip stuff where zora's like i don't have time to goof off with the other black boy members i have to train on my own i have to get stronger on my own i'm not here to make friends and be buddy buddy i just you know i want to get stronger so he's thinking about this while he's on his way to his father's grave where he noticed that there's flowers there like the ones that his dad likes um we also got the flashback earlier of the man handing his dad the flowers once his dad czar became a magic knight so there's kind of that connection there two flashbacks in the beginning of the episode is actually kind of I, I'm not gonna say it's like a lot, but you know, I, I'm just not thinking about that as I'm saying it. <laughs> but from there, he he overhears the uh, boy Ina training. Uh, Ina is like a very central figure in this episode, which is I, I enjoyed how this episode was a complete like story, like it was a complete like beginning, middle, and end wrapped up all in one. Like, and it was nicely paced. It felt it felt like a really like it just felt like it was executed really well. Um, but anyway, he's training or whatever. And Zora's just, you know, Zora is the kind of person where he doesn't really get innately super invested in people just on his own. So he's just like, yep, good luck to that guy and about to go on his way. When you notice some nobles kind of bothering this kid for no reason. And um, he eventually steps in to intervene and, you know, drive them away from the child. And this is like uh, the moment where Zora starts to scold him like, bro, he was it was a 3v1. You don't even have a grimoire. There's no way you're going to win. Shouldn't pick fights that you're not going to win. Um, the child's dad comes through, which was the old like the man who Zora remembers to, that gave his dad flowers. Um, he comes through. And he's apologizing for his son's actions. And this is when like Zora kind of like he sees the basket of flowers in the guy's face. So Zora's. I would argue is the smartest black bull member so i believe he's able to make the connection fairly easy like i, I like it doesn't confirm that zora remembers the guy but i think it's pretty safe to assume that he remembers him and uh, also interesting tidbit I, they never said the dad's name like the son's name is ina but they never said the dad's name like i watched the episode twice and i was even combing through it trying to find i didn't see his name unless i'm an idiot and i missed it and one of you know it comment it down below but i didn't catch his name so anyway from there the sunlight goes on this tangent of like cursing his his like status as a peasant like i wish i was never born a peasant and all this kind of stuff and this is when zora just like carries this boy off he essentially just like kidnaps him and i'm thinking to myself like what kind of dad just allows their kid to be kidnapped like granted he is handicapped you know he has his like his like crutches so he's not really mobile all like that but <laughs> it's just like i can't believe he was just that okay with it i mean he falls over like where are you going and he like thinks to himself like i could have swore i've like seen this man before or where have i seen him before no doubt zora looks just like his dad zara but i mean it's definitely probably hard to tell with the like the mask part on the bottom and the piercings and the sharp teeth um so like I could kind of give him a pass there, but then again, at the same time, red hair is kind of pretty uncommon in the world of Black Clover. Like, unless you count the Vermilions, where their hair is kind of orange. 
like outside of like Zora, Zara, and Rebecca, nobody really has red hair all like that. So, I mean, I feel like he should kind of know, but you know, it is what it is. It's just an anime, not gonna get super deep into that. But anyway, he takes the um, takes Ina back to his father's grave and basically, you know, pulls out his his doll, which at this, it, it was kind of odd for me, again, like that he pulled out this doll, but at the same time knowing Zora's backstory like it, it's very symbolic of his father why he carries this around so it makes it like a little bit less weird and it's also a good teaching tool when you think about it for the boy um Ina so basically the lesson um that Zora was trying to get across to Ina was um the super magic knight Zora despite being the child of a peasant never idolized nobles or royalty because he was able to do something that they couldn't and of course, Ina at the moment doesn't know what he's talking about and Zora doesn't tell him. And it's funny because throughout the episode, he never says exactly what he was talking about. Like towards the end, I know I'm skipping ahead, but towards the end, he mentions Ina, that is mentioned, he knows what that is, but they never say it to the audience. I'll say what I think it is t towards the end of this, but anyway after that it flashes kind of towards the like afternoon of the day i believe i like cause i feel like this whole episode happened in one day like this part being in in the morning and then this next part being in the like later in the afternoon um flashes to him training again like enos practicing against his target practicing with water magic and then the boy comes back uh kaito was the noble child who was like basically bothering him earlier so he comes back and is basically like, oh, look, I need you to apologize to me and all this and attempts to shoot a huge, you know, blast of fire at him. So this is when Zora again intervenes. However, um, I thought it was like really interesting with Zora intervening because for Zora said himself, it takes a little bit of time to set up a magic circle. And it's not like he knew where the kid was going to appear. Like he didn't know like, okay, Kaito's going to appear right here and shoot a fireball and I'm going to jump in at this exact part. Like I, there's no way I... I like highly doubt he thought that far ahead just because I mean it'd be really random what I think it is is probably just a result of Zora's training also a combination of it's like a, a 15 year old kid that just got his book like he just got his grammar so the spell's probably not all that powerful so he probably doesn't have to really put that much effort into it to reflect it back um or you could even look at it as it still takes Zora time to place like you know traps up but say he possibly had this one like just on him somewhere like how he has the 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 traps all over his body and he just dropped down and like just threw it out like if he could actually like project traps off of him like the project the traps on him off him you could also take it that way which would be cool i could be looking too much into it just because you could argue that they might not have put that much thought into it being a anime kind of filler kind of canon episode but i think it's cool to think about regardless with this exact segment of the episode brings in another point of it that i enjoyed a lot is it brought in um, a magical item into play and like outside of sally using magical items to increase people's mana like herself and that mud dude i forget his name we really don't get to see magic items play a huge role in the story of black clover which is extremely interesting just because magic items like t seem to be extremely powerful um, so it just doesn't make sense that we just haven't seen them a lot. It's just really it, like I wish we would see them more in the main story. It could be especially used for the characters like Magna, who like has like you know he has a lower amount of mana, so it could give him that that like extra boost. Or for characters like Luck, or you know it, it could really be used for those like peasant characters or commoner characters that could get that extra boost. Like outside of Ghosh with his eye, we really don't see much. And it's not like magic items are not allowed. Like, Nozelle has a bunch of magical items. I mean, Ghosh has one in his eye, like I was just saying. So, like, they're allowed. People just don't use them for some reason, which is, it's, it's always been, been like, odd. This feels like a very underexplored facet of Black Clover would be the magical items for sure. So, it, it was really cool to actually see some of them, or I guess one of them in this episode. So, at this point, we're at, like, the climax, or, or not necessarily the climax, but the, like, third segment, uh, which would be, like, the nighttime. Um, Ina and his father at dinner. And this is when the father of Kaito just bursts in like, you stole from me. And <laughs> this was super funny because I'm just thinking to myself, like, if I'm just eating dinner in my house and some dude just barges in, I'm just like, bro, do y'all not lock y'all doors? Like, <laughs> how did this guy just burst in? Like, you stole from me. I'd be like, bro, you got your shoes on in my house. Like, I'm, I'm, I am eating like 
who are you? Like, <laughs> so, but that aside, he accuses Ina of like stealing a bracelet from his villa or whatever, um, which is totally false. As we know, as, as the watcher, you know, Kaito attempted to use that magic item bracelet to amp his magic to really mess him up. So, but Kaito's father, that is just like kind of takes Ina out of, out of his uh, house. And at this point, again, I was thinking like this dude's dad just lets his son just get taken all the uh, time. It's like, how you let these random people just grab your son and walk off? It just seemed so odd to me. But at least this time he did step up and was like, look, I believe my son. Like, you know, I'm not going to let you take him. So that was that. This is when Kaito's dad unleashes like it seemed like a big, albeit unnamed fire attack at Ina's father. And he like blocks it with like uh, some of his water magic now this is really interesting because Eno was shocked that his dad was able to even do such a powerful spell however i do think a lot of this could be attributed to like the fact that water has an innate advantage against fire i thought it was very odd that they never mentioned that in the episode just because like i mean you know he does have to have some power to not get completely overtaken by the other guy's spell but I would attribute a lot of him being able to block that attack to the fact that it, it was water magic. So after Ina's dad and Kaito's dad have another clash, um, Kaito's father is like, I'm going to get the Magic Knights involved, you know, I'm going to get your son arrested, all this and that. And that's when uh, Zora drops down and takes his robe off, revealing to Ina and his father that he is in fact a Magic Knight. And uh, it, it was funny to me because Kaito's dad recognized that it was the Black Bulls robe. So I really thought at this moment that he was going to get some, oh no, this is the Black Bulls. This is like the last person I want here because they're just full of a bunch of misfits. But he was totally cool with him being a Black Bull. And he's like, look, this, this peasant stole from me. I have proof or whatever. And Zora being the absolute last person that this guy would want to be there just proceeds to tear into him saying like no your son is a liar your son is like a thief you're a failure as a father like they both just run off and i'm just like yeah that was like a deserved moment and then from there we learn uh the very interesting thing that uh, ina's father actually attempted to join the magic knights several times and he failed and that's how he got his injury but the thing that i enjoyed the most about this episode is you kind of really get to see the other end of the spectrum when it comes to like power in Black Clover or magical power in Black Clover. Because a lot of times we're used to seeing Yuno's incredible power, we're used to seeing Noel and Yami and just these massive monopool amazing spells like we were used to seeing that we don't really get to see the other spectrum of it that often. So like even when you think about joining the Magic Knights, it's not necessarily an easy task. Like most people in the clover kingdom cannot make it in the magic knights like you have to be incredibly powerful like i'll show this clip of back in the beginning like at the actual magic knights exam like you have to be able to do spells of this level to get into the magic knights like that like these entrants in this exam would totally mop anybody in this episode i mean outside of zora obviously but like you have to be able to do this level of things to join the magic knights so like for a for a peasant this is like a huge hurdle this is a really daunting task to join the magic knights when you have to get up to that level like even 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 like early grimoire you know was extremely extremely powerful like you really have to take that into consideration it's not just um i'm gonna join the magic knights So like you really have to give credit to zara for actually becoming the first peasant or any peasant that makes it through the actual entrance exam um and even ina's father and ina himself are wanting to do such a thing so like definitely big ups to them and after this ina has a newfound respect for zora of course zora uh you know parts with them with his famous rainbow stink bug as he's leaving the ending of this is really good to me just because we get another look into zora's character which zora is like one of the most developed characters in black clover just because of how much of his backstory and how much of inside the way he thinks we get when he's on screen uh even in that last conversation he was saying i never made it to becoming a super mage like i'm just striving to become a true magic knight and even through this episode at the beginning he's just talking about like yeah i can't be buddy buddy with these guys but towards the end he realizes through helping ina like you know what i'm trying to make it to stage zero 
helping the other black bulls will only help me and everybody else get to that exact same goal so we, we got that whole growth of zora through the episode which is cool to see love it when zora is on screen um i wouldn't even mind more one-off episodes like this this was a really good filler as far as filler goes like a really good episode a nice complete package that i enjoyed i enjoyed this episode a lot so let me know how you guys feel about the episode if you liked it disliked it um definitely excited for next week's because we're getting vanessa going back to the witch queen and the witch's forest which is really exciting because i'm super pumped to see more on the witch queen I, I hope she gets a lot of screen time so i can like talk about her because uh, she's definitely one of the more interesting characters in the series um that being said make sure you guys like and sub to the channel i greatly appreciate all the support um as for what's going on later on in the week tomorrow i plan on having a live stream so if you're watching it today which is tuesday tomorrow being wednesday i do plan on having one probably around like seven or eight est um eastern standard time or somewhere around there i'll definitely i'll make a twitter post about it if any of you guys follow me link to my twitter is in the description like it normally is i do forget sometimes but Outside of that, you guys have a great day, and I will catch you guys later.